Hi. So we're finishing up in Mark chapter 12. We're on uh, verses 35 through 44. So let's begin. While Jesus was teaching in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies at your feet. David himself calls him Lord, so how can he be his son? And the large crowd was listening to him with delight. So this is an interesting thing because there's a lot going on here and it seems like there's a lot of truth that kind of feels contradictory. But let's, let's try and unpack it. So he says, how can the scribes say that the Messiah is the son of David? Well, because he is. Jesus is descended from David. That's true. That's why Jesus was born in Bethlehem, because they had to return to the, to the place of uh, ancestry and that's for the census, and that's, that's why they were there. So he is the descendant of David. But Jesus is contradicting this. He's saying David himself calls this Messiah Lord. So how can the Messiah be his son if he's going to call him Lord? It's a great question, and I think I might know the answer. But in order to illustrate it, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. So, have you ever seen any of these people before? Let's have a look. So here's one. Maybe you know this person, maybe you don't. Looks like a professional baseball player doing some concept clues. Looks like Cincinnati Reds. Hmm. Here's another person. Looks very dramatic. Perhaps an actor. Black and white photo might mean back in the day, might not, could just be artsy. Here we have an uh, elderly African-American fella. He looks like he might be in a church, perhaps, although there's a flag behind him, maybe some sort of politician or a political figure. Do you know who any of these people are? No? Well, I will tell you that all three of these people were successful at what they did, but they were not the most famous person in their family for it. Now let's look at these people. You might recognize this one. Hall of Famer, hundreds of home runs, huge deal, massive in Seattle. He is Ken Griffey Jr. What about this one? Yep, Iron Man, as well as many other Oscar nominations and things like that. Celebrated actor, Robert Downey Jr. And this last one. Should be very famous indeed. Hugely influential person in American history, and uh, that is Martin Luther King Jr. Now, why did I show those three previous people? Well, the three previous people were uh, Ken Griffey, Robert Downey, and Martin Luther King, just without the junior attached. They were all very successful at what they did, but nowhere near as, as much of a household name as the people who came after them. Similarly, King David what may have been Jesus's ancestor, but Jesus is greater than David. So there's some truth in both parts of that. That's how I best understand it. Hopefully that helps for you. As he taught, he said, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance, say long prayers they will receive the greater condemnation. Well, what's the issue here? He's not necessarily being upset with scribes who do these things. It's why they do it. Once again, as been a theme so many times, we're looking at the issue of the heart. What is the motive? Why is this happening? And why are these people walking around in long robes? Why do they want respect? Why do they have the best seats and places of honor? Is it because they have been given these uh, out of love from the people around them? Or is it because they want the sake for the sake of appearance to be higher than others. Remember, Jesus has said so many times here that those who put themselves first will end up being last. And this is once again reminding us that we should have a servant's heart rather than doing things just for the sake of appearance. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. 
So there's nothing wrong with rich people giving it, giving uh, money to charity. Many rich people putting large sums. Jesus does not say that's a bad thing. That's a great thing. You, please keep doing it. But he points at this poor widow who only had two copper coins and gave up both of them. How she was expecting to live, I do not know. Hopefully, maybe maybe she had some sort of person who could maybe feed her, clothe her, make sure she's okay. I don't know. But she gave in every coin that she had, everything that she had. And from the person who's willing to give all, so much will be given back to them. All right. Well, after this, uh, it will be spring break. So please do ch double check on things like uh, Google, Google Classroom and other things to make sure that you ha aren't missing any assignments. Make sure that you keep hold of your Gospel of Mark work. Do not lose it. I will want it before the end of the school year, so make sure you've got that done. And stay up to date. I miss you guys, and I hope you have a lovely spring break. Do not work too hard, at least not for my classes. Bye-bye now.